So we're going to pick up where we left off on that um, homework 7.1, uh, the, e, the episode 7.1, where we were talking about functions and um, input and outputs. Because uh, for homework 8, um, we're going to talk about, you're going to have to dis discern whether something's a function or not. And then second, you're going to have to describe the domain and range of that function. So here's a, a function again. So, whoops, I left off the f of x. So here's f of x is equal to x squared plus 2. So I've built a little machine. So here's the f function. And notice what happens when I drop a number into it. First, you square the number. Um, you square it, and then you add 2 to it. So if I was to drop a 1 in there, 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3 would come out. And we could build a series of outputs here. So I dropped in a 1. A 3 came out. If I was to drop a 2 in there, 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, so a 6 would come out. So that means when I drop into 4, 6 comes out. If I was to drop a negative 1 in there, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. So a negative 1, a 3 comes out. Um, we can do a couple more. Let's drop a 10 in. When I drop a 10 in, 10 squared is 100, 100 plus 2 is 102. So when I drop in 10, 102 comes out. So you can see we can keep doing this all day long. We can keep generating things all day long. And so um, the first question is, is this in fact a function? So remember, a function relates two sets of numbers, which this clearly does. Here's one set of numbers. There's another set of numbers. They're being related to each other. One is connected to three. Two is connected to six. Negative one is connected to three. Ten is connected to 102. Okay. Then the second condition for something to be a function is every input has to have exactly one output. So notice when I drop in 1, only a 3 came out. So check. When I dropped in 2, only a 6 came out. Phew. When I dropped in negative 1, only a 3 came out. Now some of you are saying, wait a minute, there's two 3s here. That's okay, because every input has only one output. Does 1 only have one output? Yes. Does negative 1 only have one output? Yes. It doesn't matter that they're the same output, because every input only has one output. Notice that we don't say every output comes from only one input. We could have actually a function that takes every input and changes it, changes it to five. So if I drop in a one, a five comes out. I drop in a two, a five comes out. I drop in a three, a five comes out. That is still a function because everything I drop in only produces one answer. Okay, so, um, when you're looking to check whether something's a function or not, you're checking to see if there's two different x's, two different input values connected to the, um, I'm sorry, two different output values connected to one input value. So if you're looking at a series of function, a series of points, so sometimes we describe a function this way. So if this is the description of my function, I'm trying to decide whether this is a function or not. Um, so one's connected to two and nothing else. Three is connected to five <clears throat> and nothing else. Four is connected to eight, and that's the only thing it's connected to, and five is connected to seven. So this would be a function. Um, now what if I had this in here? So notice four is co connected to four, and oh, four is also connected to eight. So here I put an input, I put an input of 4 and got out of 4. Later, I put an input of 4 and got out of 8. So this would tell me this is not a function because one input is connected to two different outputs, and that makes it not a function. Okay? Um, and it's easy to see if you're looking at a graph, too, if you're checking for a function, right? So if you have something that goes like this, kind of folds over on itself, Okay, notice that this x value right here is connected to that y value and that y value right there and that y value right there. So this one x value is connected to one, two, three y values. So if we're picking like this is what, one, two, three and a half. So 3.5 is connected to, looks like about 0. 0.6. So 3.5 goes to 0. 0.6. 3.5 also goes to, it looks like, 1.5. And 3.5 also goes to 2.5. Right? So that, again, would not be a function. Okay, so that's an idea of function. Um, 
So sometimes the question will just ask you, is this a function or not? So all you're doing is seeing if it's a relationship between two sets of numbers, and they're all going to be that. And then the second question is, does every input only have one output? Okay. So and then along with that question is, we're looking at the, at, um, the concept of domain and range. Okay. So domain is a list of all possible input values and range is a list of all possible output values so and notice it's a list it's not just I, I tell you about a couple it's a list of all possible output values so when I look at this thing here for example um, go back up here when I'm squaring it and adding two to it. The question is, um, is there any limit to what I can drop in here? So when I drop in numbers in here, is there any problem with dropping a certain number in? Okay, so can I square any number that you can think of? Yeah. If I drop in one, it'll work. Drop in 0.2, it'll work. I'll drop in negative 5.7, it'll work. There's no problem with squaring things. And there's no problem with adding two to things, right? So this, the domain of this function is going to be all real numbers. Or another way to write that is from negative infinity to infinity. You may, this is what is called interval notation. That's something we'll talk about more about in a second. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about domain. So if I'm looking at something like this, 1 comma 5, and 3 comma 8 and 4 comma 7 and 8 comma 2 okay and here's my this is my whole function this is all it does is it relates 1 to 5 3 to 8 4 to 7 and 8 to 2 so if i ask what's the domain of this thing i'm just listing all the input values so in this case there's a finite number of them so i can just list them so i would go 1 comma 3 comma 4 comma 8 and notice I'm using these braces because that's what you use when you're just listing numbers as opposed to trying to describe a whole group of them. Okay? And then in this case, the range would be all the output values. So that would be 5, comma, well, let's do them in order. Let's see, that would be 2, comma, 5, comma, 7, comma, 8. Often when we list numbers, we list them in ascending order. So this is all the possible... This right here is all the possible numbers that can be plugged in based on what I see here. These are all the numbers that could come out. Okay? So let's look at another example. Let's say we're just looking at a graph. Because like we said before, there's a lot of different ways to describe a function. Okay? So once again, I'm talking about the domain and range of this thing. What's the domain? Well, that's all the possible input values. Well, the input values on a graph are the x values, right? So I look over here and I say, okay, what x values are um, involved in this graph? So I'm thinking about the different points here on this graph. Like, for example, this point right here is the point 1, 2. This point right here is the point 3, or 2, 2, right? This point right here is the point, looks like about negative... 0.5 comma maybe 0.6-ish, right? It's hard to tell exactly, but uh, you get the idea. So I'm thinking about, I want to list all the x values that are being used here. Now I can't list all of them, so what I do is I describe them using interval notation. So the very first x value that's being used is right here. The x coordinate of that point is negative 2. So I'm going to start with negative 2, and since negative 2 does have a point there, I'm going to use a square bracket or a closed bracket, which means I include negative 2. And then notice everything is being, every x value is being used from negative 2 on until I get up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. After 6, there isn't any points. So I put, put a square bracket around that. So this means I'm going from negative 2 to 6 and everything in between. Now, what if this, oops, what if this would have been a, open circle. Just remember we use open circles to represent, I, I go right up to that point but not include that point. Well then that would change this to a soft bracket. So in other words I want to include 
negative two down here because there's a solid dot, but I don't want to include six because it's left off on the graph. Okay? And likewise, range, we, now we're talking about y values, right? Because y are the outputs. So it looks like the lowest y value is, neg is positive one, and it is included, so I'll put a one there. And um, it doesn't matter how many times these y's show up, but uh, their, the highest y value is one, two, three, four, right before four. So I'm going to put a four here and put a soft bracket. So that means I can go right up to four, but not include four. Okay. So that's the idea of domain range. Now, there's a really good worksheet that's um, posted in Canvas. It's called um, functions-domain and range worksheet 8.1. So um, that would be a good thing to work on right now to practice what I just showed you. Um, finding, testing whether something's a function or not and finding domain and range based on graphs or ordered pairs, okay? So, um, but I'm going to continue with domain range, this idea, because um, where it really gets challenged, I think, is when we're looking at an equation like this, like the one we did earlier. And let me give you a little trick for this. So when I'm thinking, if I'm looking at an equation, trying to ask the question of domain, because remember, domain is the list of all possible input values. And so your first thought is, well, I could plug anything I want to into there. And that's a good first thought. That's the way I think when I look at an equation, I think, the domain is all real numbers. It's my first assumption, unless there's a problem, okay? So we have to think about the problems. What are the problems? Well, there's a couple problems in math. One problem is dividing by zero, right? We cannot divide by zero. If we try to divide by zero, we get no answer. So that's what I mean by I think about the problem. So if I look about this, this equation here, I assume that the domain is all the numbers unless there's a problem. And I, so I start begin checking the problems. What are the problems? Well, one of the problems is dividing by zero. So is plugging, is there any number that I would plug into this equation that would cause me to divide by zero? And since there's no division in this equation anywhere, the answer would be no. I don't have to worry about dividing by zero. So that problem is out of the question. I don't have to worry about it. What's another problem? The second problem is negative inside the square root. Okay? So remember when we have a negative inside the square root, like a negative five, that's, or let's do negative four so we can actually do the square root. That's equal to, we talked about this a little bit in class, that's equal to two i, but we agreed in this class we're not gonna be dealing with i's and also, when you're talking about domain, we're talking about a domain over the real numbers. So what, imp what real numbers can I input into this um, uh, function? So anytime you have a negative inside the square root, it's not a real number. So we would not con consider that part of the domain. So then, so the second thing when I ask myself here is, is there any number I plug in for x that would cause me to take the square root of a negative number? But once again, there's no square roots in this function. So it passes that test, okay? The third problem is one that we don't have to really worry about because we're not dealing with logarithms yet, but I'll say it anyway. Um, with logarithm, you cannot, you cannot take the log of zero or a negative number. We'll have to worry about that at some point, but right now we're not doing logarithms, so we don't have to worry about it, okay? And clearly there's no logs in this equation. So this, the domain of this thing would be all real numbers, or another way to write that would be go from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, that's fun, huh? So let's look at another example. Let's say g of x is equal to um, 3x plus 2 over x minus 4. So once again, if I'm looking for domain, just we're just talking about domain right now. If I want another domain, I say, um, I assume the domain is all real numbers unless there's a problem. What are the problems? Dividing by zero. Is there a number I could plug into this equation that would cause me to divide by zero? And the answer is yes. If I plug in x equal to four, if I plug a four in there, it'll make me divide by zero. Because that'd be 12 plus two is 14 divided by zero, right? So that tells me that four is a problem here. Four is a problem, okay? Then I go down the list. Is there anything in this equation that would cause me to take the negative of a, or have a negative inside the square root? 
And nope, there's no square roots, so don't worry about that. Any logarithms? No, don't worry about that. So the only problem is four. So my domain is going to be all real numbers except four. And a good way to write that would be from negative infinity to four, not including, union, four, whoops, four to infinity. So again, this is saying I can go right up to four but not include four. And then I, this says start at four but don't include it and then go anything after that all the way up to infinity. Okay, let me give you one more example. H of x is equal to um, the square root of x plus 2 over um, x minus 1. So in this case, I assume the domain is all real numbers, unless there's a problem. What are the problems? Divide by 0. So is there anything that I could plug in here that would cause me to divide by 0? Well, yes. If I plug in a 1, that would cause me to divide by 0. So I say 1 is a problem. Right? Then I go to the next problem. Is there anything that would cause me to take the square root of a negative number? Well, yes. Anything below negative 2, anything less than negative 2, would cause me to take the square root of a negative number. Because if I plug in, for example, negative 2.5 in here, negative 2.5 plus 2 is negative 0.5. And that would be square root of negative 5. So I can't do that. So um, x values less than negative 2 are a problem. Right? So when I write the domain, remember I'm writing what's not a problem, what does work. So uh, for the domain in this case, I would start at, well, the lowest number is, since I can't be less than 2, the lowest number is negative 2, right? But I can't include 2, so I'm going to put a little bracket there. Um, actually, I can include 2, can I? Because square root of, uh, of 0 is fine. So I'm going to put a hard bracket there, and I'm going to go up to 1 and not include 1. Because 1 is a problem for a different reason, right? For, because it caused me to divide by 0. Put a little union symbol, grab a 1 again, and then from 1 on, I'm okay. So I go all the way to infinity. Okay. So that's a, that should get you started on domain and range and whether something's a function or not. Um, and there's a couple worksheets you can use. There's also a worksheet 8.2 that... Um, looks at some domain ranges of, of equations and also on worksheet um, 8.2 there's some adding together of functions which i'm going to do a separate video for that